Have you ever wondered how people manage the time to market? Pretty much every investor that's ever lived has been told at some point that you can't time the market. Time in the market beats timing the market. How do you square that with the fact that hedge funds and trading firms and investment banks exist? Don't all these organizations employ traders whose entire job revolves around beating the market by jumping in, taking profits, and jumping out? Well, stick with me today for 10 minutes or so, and I'll show you how people are doing it. I'll show you how you can apply some basic established rules to your investing philosophy that could, maybe, help you earn some alpha. Or, you know, maybe I'll help you incinerate your money and leave you penniless and broke. Well, that's fantastic. A really smart decision, young man. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund. Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest, and it's gone. Before we get started, let's lay out some ground rules. You are not ready to do this unless, number one, you are actively employed and are earning an income that can support you. In other words, you're not currently living off your portfolio. Number two, you have an established investment portfolio already and you're looking to play around with a small percentage of it to create some outsized returns. Number three, you agree to never, ever invest more than 10% of your investment portfolio in this strategy or any other market timing strategy. So here's a crash course. Like a thousand years ago, there was this guy named Charles Dow who really wanted to be a financial writer, but no one would give him a job. So what did he do? Well, he bought a newsletter and eventually turned that newsletter into a newspaper, which he called the Wall Street Journal. While working at the Wall Street Journal, he created an index of his 12 favorite stocks, which he called the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Where this story gets really interesting is when he dies at the ripe old age of 51. After Dow's death, a fairly extensive collection of his research was discovered that laid out various principles for analyzing market behavior through price action. This came to be known to historians as Dow Theory, and it revolves around analyzing patterns and trends in stock prices. Today, we call this modern form of astrology technical analysis. For example, note this rare Stachosaurus pattern. Whenever you see this pattern forming on a chart, it means that you're about to sip on some Cristal with P. Diddy on a yacht in the Mediterranean. Hashtag straight ballin'. Today, we're going to apply Dow theory against Dow's industrial index to see if it's possible to time this market to get better returns than a buy-and-hold investor would by just holding on to their shares forever. Before we get going, let me just warn you up front that you're about to see some techniques here that you've probably never seen or even heard of before. Don't get frustrated if you don't understand the computer code that you're going to see me writing. The important part here is the Dow Theory principles that we're expressing through the code. If you want to learn more about algorithmic trading, then I'll leave some resources for you to dig into a bit deeper in this video's description. I want you to imagine that there are two investors, Tim and Kim. Both are implementing this strategy that we're going to create in the next segment. They both buy shares whenever the algorithm triggers a buy signal, but Kim, who's a long-term buy and hold investor, ignores the sell signals, whereas Tim follows all the signals from the algorithm, and he both buys and sells whenever the algorithm tells him to. Who do you think is going to end up with more money after 20 years? We'll come back to this later. This is the Dow Jones ETF, ticker symbol DIA. First, we're going to change the chart period from days to months. From a quick glance at the chart, it looks like we're in an uptrend. There is this hideous crash of 2020, which is pretty nasty. We're going to enable the indicator to plot the 10-month moving average. The most basic strategy would have you buying anytime the monthly candlestick is above the moving average and selling anytime the monthly candlestick is below the moving average. We're going to go a bit deeper than just banking on the 10 month moving average. First, we're going to start by creating a new study. In this study, we're going to plot every position on the chart where the 10 month and 20 month moving averages cross. This indicator should give us an early idea about whether our strategy may have potential. We're going to call our study Dow Theory MA Plot Monthly. 
we're going to set the fast moving average to 10 months and the slow moving average to 24 months. We want to draw a shape indicator anywhere on the chart where these two moving averages cross over one another. We also want to draw the moving averages themselves on the chart for reference. We're going to do a little code cleanup here to make sure our syntax is correct. And then we will apply this study onto our chart. Once we apply our study onto the chart, we're going to see red diamonds everywhere that the two moving averages cross. We want to visually inspect these indicators. We're looking to see if we had acted on these indicators, would we have been rewarded? It does look very promising. When the 10 month moving average crosses above the 24 month moving average, we are seeing long bull runs. And where we see the 10 month moving average crossing under the 24, we're seeing precipitous drops. Now, Dow theory tells us that we should be also be looking at volume to confirm that the signals we're receiving are good, but so far so good. The ZTF does look like a good candidate to develop a basic trading algorithm for. Next, we're going to create a new trading strategy based on a simple algorithm. We start by changing the chart period from months to days, and then we need to create a new strategy script. We're going to name our new strategy Dow Theory Signals. And we're going to set the fast moving average to 10 days, and we're going to set the slow moving average to 24 days. Whenever the fast moving average crosses above the slow moving average, we want to trigger our brokerage to buy shares. And whenever the fast moving average crosses below the slow moving average, we want to trigger our brokerage to sell shares. Next up, we want to plot the moving averages on the chart along with the signals. And then finally, we are going to set some properties on our new strategy. For example, every time we receive a buy signal, we want to invest $1,000 into this ETF. We're going to start out with a portfolio of $100,000, and we're going to use US dollars as our currency. And once we try to run this script, we actually get some syntax errors. So we need to fix the syntax errors. But once that's done, we're going to apply it to the chart. We can see from the performance report that the value of our portfolio is 290000 Once you subtract the $1,000 we contribute on each buy signal and the $22,000 worth of losing trades, we're left with a net overall profit of about 82000 So how did Tim and Kim do? Remember that Tim set his strategy on autopilot, and whenever the strategy raised the signal, he allowed the algorithm to act on it, both buying and selling whenever the criteria was met. Kim, on the other hand, is a buy and hold investor, so she only allowed the algorithm to act on the buy signals, and she prevented it from acting on any of the sell signals. In our back test from 1999 through 2020, Kim ended up with about $100,000 less than Tim. Kim ended up with around $200,000 where Tim ended up with about 300000 So what's our key takeaway from today's video? Well, it's mixed. On one hand, we've seen a very basic example of how researchers, traders, and institutional investors develop and test strategies for beating the market with market timing. The bad news is that markets are not predictable, and the barrier to entry to do something like this is extremely high. Generally speaking, it's my personal opinion that ordinary, everyday investors should focus on strategies that have repeatedly proven to create wealth over time, such as using low-cost, passively managed index funds in a risk-calibrated, personalized, balanced portfolio.